everyone, I'm Katie Wolfson and this is The Scientific Method. On this web show, we're going to dive into the wonderful, messy world of science and we're going to learn about current research happening directly from the scientists themselves. So for our very first episode, we are going to talk about a monster of a topic. Global climate change! You've been bombarded with images of glaciers melting, floods raging, fires burning, crops dying! Unless you live in Greenland, because then your crops are probably growing more, but regardless, <laughs> you've heard the buzzwords of fossil fuels, carbon footprints, alternative energies. All of those climate change stories have to do with us, humans. But folks, there are a lot of other climate change stories out there. And some scientists, like entomologist Cesar Nufio, who we're going to talk to today, haven't forgotten that. Grasshoppers uh, provide us with the opportunity to get an idea of what's happening um, to some organisms, and they sort of speak for the other organisms that might be in, in the ecosystem. That's right, you heard the man, grasshoppers. In this episode, we're going to step away from the human-centered perspective on climate change, and we're going to talk about Cesar Nufio's ongoing research about the effects of climate change on Colorado grasshoppers. So why grasshoppers? They respond um, beautifully to temperature. Their response to climate on a year-to-year -year basis has been pretty amazing. One day, Cesar was helping the CU Boulder Entomology Collection move into a new building. And when he was doing that, he discovered three notebooks and a collection of 24,000 grasshoppers from the 1950s that would change everything. The notebooks and the grasshoppers were from a biologist named Gordon Alexander, who used to be the head of the biology department at CU Boulder. So when we first found the records, um, it was honestly like in the movies where the room gets really long when somebody has made some realization or they figured out who the killer was. And I just uh, was going through the pages and I kept seeing weather station, weather station, weather station. And then I kept noticing that um, every week they went to that weather station. And then I thought, oh my gosh, I know what we're going to be doing in five years. What Cesar was going to be doing not just for the next five years, but the next seven years and beyond was actually collect grasshoppers and climate data in the exact same spots that Gordon Alexander and his team collected data 50 years ago. We basically go to each site every seven days and then we use our sweep net to sweep the vegetation. We collect the grasshoppers that are there, we sit under a tree, and then basically go through all the grasshoppers that are in the bag. As Cesar and his team counted all of those grasshoppers, they recorded the species, the sex, and the developmental stages. By looking at the number of grasshoppers and which stage they're in, Cesar is able to look for changes in phenology. Phenology is the timing of specific events in an organism's life. So for example, when does a plant flower, or bear fruit, or drop its leaves? For a grasshopper, we're looking for when does the grasshopper reach its adult stage. By comparing all this data on grasshoppers and climate, Cesar could then compare it to 50 years ago and look for some really cool patterns. We've been finding a couple of really interesting things. Uh, one is that when it comes to the phenology, on years that are uh, cool and mild, we're getting the grasshoppers to hatch um, and um, become adults pretty much the same week that they did 50 years ago, which is pretty amazing. However, when we get really warm years, like 2012 was the second warmest year in Colorado that we have data for. And it turned out that the grasshoppers along this whole mountain range were um, hatching 30 days to 45 days um, earlier than they did 50 years ago. In addition to grasshopper phenology, Cesar also looked at plant phenology. What we found uh, over the last four years is that depending from when we compare the coolest year to the warmest year, on average, the timing of flowering for plants changed about 12 days, and for grasshoppers, it changed about 25 days. So what this means is that different species in the same ecosystem can have totally different reactions to climate change. In the future, um, to warming, we're gonna get more insects, I believe, uh, more grasshoppers, but we're probably gonna get a decline in the number of flowering plants that are there. Okay, so Cesar's research is telling us that grasshoppers are growing faster and staying around longer with higher temperatures, but the plants are getting stressed out. This means that nature's getting out of sync with itself, but why should we care? Why does it matter what's happening to a bunch of grasshoppers? Grasshoppers actually make up most of the biomass and are the primary uh, or the most dominant herbivores in grassland ecosystems. So it's not only that the grasshoppers have the grasshopper community, but they also feed on vegetation. And there's been a lot of um, studies that have shown that depending on the composition of grasshoppers and their abundance, they affect uh, the type of vegetation that grows in a particular area. But because they're so abundant, birds rely on them. 
So if something's happening to the grasshoppers, there must be something happening to many different trophic levels that, um, that interact with those grasshoppers. In other words, if these grasshoppers are being affected by climate change, which they definitely seem to be, all of these other organisms in the ecosystem are gonna be affected too. So there are tons of climate change stories going on besides our own, and it's really important for us to study those as well so that we can keep an eye on everything. You know, I never thought about grasshoppers. Um, I never really paid much attention to grasshoppers, and now I just can't help. I can't help thinking about them, <laughs> and I can't help catching them, and I can't, can't help learning about them. If you want to learn even more about CESAR's research, you can go to ghopclimate.colorado.edu or click the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.